Hearing with us, ABC's Brittany Shepard, congressional reporter Trish Turner, senior investigative reporter Aaron Katursky, and retired NYPD chief of detectives Robert Boyce. Brittany, let's start with you. Committee members there going pretty hard on profits versus the people using PowerPoint presentations. Gun manufacturers is not answering specific questions, though, on the money that they do make off these weapons. Record, record profits, including marketing uh, these weapons using creative buzzwords to help bring in those sales. Exactly, Kira. What we're hearing from these gun manufacturers is an attempt to humanize both themselves and their product. No surprise here is they rake in tons of money and there are Republicans on the committee and of course in the chamber who believe that it is going to be a high market to a issue. When you're hearing this testimony and of course that really gut-wrenching um, video that we saw at the, at the top of families and survivors of those killed in Uvalde, um, in Sandy Hook, you have have to wonder who the dual audiences um, of this kind of committee is. Of course, it's the folks in the chamber, but of, and the American people, who I think it's about a majority, 50, 52 percent, um, support some kind of assault weapons ban or any kind of advanced. Um, uh, edit to the gun legislation, but it's also to the larger chamber right now, where we're seeing the House really difficultly attempt to get an assault weapons ban reinvigorated after 30 years after 1994 on the Hill. Carolyn Maloney even told us, ABC, that she thinks that they might have the votes, but Democrats really need four, they could only, pardon me, lose four Democrats here. And I think about some, some of this committee hearing is to convince those Democrats to fall in party line and push this kind of legislation into the Senate where it's sure to fail, but at least prove to the American people before they go on recess just next week that they're trying their hardest. So that's why they're going so hard on these manufacturers, not just to their colleagues, but to bring that home into their constituencies. Yeah, but the question is, will that work? You know, Aaron, we were listening to the manufacturers like Marty Daniel, CEO of Daniel Defense. He was getting grilled on his gun, the same model used by the Uvalde gunman, to which he went to a stat saying uh, the weapon like the one used in Uvalde, it's been used fewer than 4%. It's been used in fewer than 4% of homicides in 2019. I mean, just the fact that he would just lay that out as in if any homicide is okay <laughs> using that weapon, but what did you make of him putting that stat out there? It's really the first number that we've heard, some sort of statistic by one of these gun manufacturers so far. Of course, he's right. Uh, it, most of the gun violence is, uh, involves a, a handgun in this country, and, and this is a committee hearing that's focused on on a, on a semi-automatic assault-style rifle that, that the committee uh, has rightly said is the weapon of choice for most of the mass shootings, the high-profile ones that, that get everyone talking about. So I think that you know he's entirely right, and his his testimony reminded me of that, actually, of, of Purdue Pharma or the Sacklers in saying that uh, just like drug makers make a, a legal product that is, um, you know, brought to market and in, in, in ways that are often beyond the manufacturer's control, uh, gun makers here are saying the same thing, that they, they make a product that is, is legal and once it leaves their their shop, uh, they don't control who pulls the trigger or even necessarily who gets it. So uh, the committee, I think, w wants an apology for something that the, the, the gun makers are, are unwilling to give. And ultimately, the committee may try to, uh, to, to use techniques that were successful in dealing with the, the opioids epidemic to, to hold drug makers uh, accountable in some ways for that. And we're seeing just yesterday a $4 billion settlement by Teva Pharmaceuticals. Here, the, the committee, or at least the Democrats on the committee, would like gun makers to be held responsible for the, the, uh, the, the gun violence epidemic in the country. But the same mechanisms that exist to track how drugs permeate our, our society, they don't exist for, for uh, tracing the way guns permeate our society. Um, I, I don't think we're going to be seeing any apologies on behalf of the gun manufacturers. Bob, you know, as this committee tries to prove that these gun manufacturers are responsible for the gun violence epidemic. Is that even a fair argument to make here as you've been listening to them defend themselves? And, and you know, can this committee even prove that because 
of their marketing or because uh, they say they're putting profits over people, that that truly is causing these mass shootings and, and the high rise in crime and deaths across our country? Kira, I think there's so many policy failures that we all go around right through the system. Clearly, they're, they're a player in this, the manufacturers. But then the manufacturers is one, the one lady said, goes to dealers, um, goes to distributors, and then dealers. So our present system now um, of, of determining who can get these guns, who's, who's, who's going to be a receiver of these, the purchaser, get these guns, is failing. And that's what we should be going after right now. They should be playing a role in it, of course. But you, condemning them alone is not, the, is not the answer here. And that's the problem. And they have, they have a leg to stand on here. They're going to fight here. But the fact of the matter is our entire system of getting these guns into people, especially young men and teens uh, who are undiagnosed mental illness, that's the issue. And that's what we need to be talking about, as well as the gun owners and how much they're making. But the marketing here, is that the problem? And I saw Mr. Busey speak about domestic ter uh, targeting domestic ter terrorist organizations. I didn't see that from what I've done so far. So there's a lot more to be talked about here. Is that fair, though, Bob? Do these gunmen buy these weapons because of the so-called gun grabs that we just heard them referred to them to, these creative marketing strategies? You see the marketing strategies, and he was 100 percent right. It's patriotism, patriotism and militarism. When they when they push these things out, and it is a it is a weapon of war. There's no doubt about it. Civilianized, which means it does not capable of fully auto. That's the only difference between these guns here. So it's appealing to someone who wants to gain power, who wants have this brooding uh, uh, in, in uh, mental illness. So that's the appeal right there. Are they targeting these these people? I don't think so. But let, let's go over the meeting and find out specifics on that marketing campaign. So Trish, uh, Marty McDaniel, again, defending his position, saying that these mass shootings were unheard of decades ago, that guns haven't changed. It's the people. And he says where this focus should be in order to reduce the threats is the focus should be within community systems. Bob touched on that, dealing with mental health. So when we talk about Congress holding these companies accountable, is that going to be, because you've pointed out, I mean, getting gun legislation passed is, is truly a difficult thing, and holding these companies accountable is, is, is truly difficult. So is that the route Congress goes, focusing more on the community systems versus the gun companies and how they market their weapons? Well, Kara, what we're seeing is Democrats really trying every avenue they can to try to encapsulate, you know, and move on this momentum that is out there in the, the country. There is high support for expanding background checks, holding these manufacturers accountable. But it is, it, it is just like a, a wide net that they're casting to see if anything else can get through. But to the point of mental health, so the, the legislation that passed just in June really does attempt to incentivize communities to pass these so-called red flag laws. Now, there's lots of controversy about these. Do they work? Who is responsible? How do you, you know, get the, you know, how do you take the guns? And, you know, but this is really about, you know, family members teaching the community around these vulnerable, oftentimes young men who might commit these crimes, trying to train people, to, you know, it's okay. OK to report that loved one to the court system, to the police, have those weapons temporarily seized to try to get at this problem. Of course, you know, th these red flag laws are in something like 19 states. There's federal money out there now to try to get more people on board, to try to get the states who actually have red flag, flag laws to use them. So a lot of times citizens don't even know about them. So so there is a movement there. But like you said, there, there really isn't a, a, a wider you know, movement here or support here um, for, you know, tearing down that legal immunity, that legal shield um, that exists in a 2005 law for these gun manufacturers. That's just not going to happen. And you heard it. The Republicans, you know, on that committee are attacking the Democrats saying, you're just soft on crime. We don't, you just want to defund the police. Of course, that's not true for all Democrats. He's paint, they're painting with a broad brush. But that is an attack line that 
that is really fertile this midterm cam campaign season. So th you're not going to see leadership of either chamber, I would guess, go after any type of legislation like this. You might see that assault weapons ban come across the finish line in the House on Friday. You know, the House Democratic leadership is, um, you know, this is a Herculean effort to get enough Democrats on board because of so many fissures in the Democratic Party right now, in the Democratic caucus in the House alone. So, uh, so this is even proving difficult to get an assault weapons ban through the House. It's dead on arrival in the Senate. All right, we'll continue to carry on with this conversation. Brittany Shepard, Trish Turner, Eric Kandersky, Robert Boyce, thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.